Hi, welcome to the Sacred You podcast. I'm Rachel Goodwin and I'm a channel and healer who loves to teach and empower others. I offer a look at spirituality in fresh and new ways and you can see more of my work at my website at rachelgoodwin.dk and the classes and sessions that I do. Ahu heia valea noe e kahaliko puaku kui kuhia ho kaunaia a kahapu kuva moni nei pihi kui kahi mana ho i kahapi li. Hey everybody, today we have the beautiful Coral Newberry as our guest and she is teaching about Mary Magdalene, the three Marys, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene and the Black Madonna. She's also an artist, she's been in various online magazines and she is just completing her first book and I have to say sorry for today because I talked far too much. I could blame it on lockdown and say, you know, I'm just not getting out enough. But I just had such a great time talking to Coral. I almost forgot I was interviewing her and it was just like we were just, you know, like down the road having a chat. So I promised to have her back on when she publishes her book Um, because it's got some of my, you know, favourite staff in there psychic development and stuff about Hawaii. So Coral lives in Las Vegas and she has, well, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let you find out the rest of it from the interview. Enjoy everybody. Welcome everyone to another episode of Sacred You. And I am talking to the lovely Coral today. Hi. Hi there. How are you? You you had a bit of a bit of a different morning today, haven't you? Oh, yeah, it's been busy. I was uh, just mentioning that my kids have finally gone back to school after a year of being home because of COVID. So we're, you know, they're not used to sitting in chairs for seven hours a day and wearing uniforms and all that. So it's, it was a little tricky, but it's nice to have them out of the house for a couple hours. It must feel it must feel quite strange after a year. And you've got you've got six kids as well. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, it's very quiet. And and when I clean something, it stays clean, which is just amazing. (laughs) Well, it's so lovely to have you here. I've been seeing all the different work that you do on Facebook and you posted um, some of your uh, paintings on Mm -hmm. the Sarah, Sacred Sarah group. And I was just like, wow, this woman is amazing. And that was before I knew you had six kids. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I stay busy. Mm-hmm. So where should we start? I don't know. Where would you like to start? I'm up for anything. Usually I'm quite nosy about people and like where they've come from. Okay. <laughs> I all used right. to be a psychiatric nurse and I really love knowing all about people and I just find people so interesting. So tell us a bit about your childhood and growing up and, you know, why you are the coral that you are now, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I grew up in a Mormon family. So I was raised Mormon, very, very, very strict. My parents were converts to the Mormon church. So I feel like it made them almost more strict because they had a lot to prove to their families about, about the church and raising their kids a certain way. And so as you can see, just from kind of, you know, knowing me on Facebook, I, I'm kind of a a free spirit. (laughs) And so having those rules was very hard, but when One good thing about the way I was raised is my family was very spiritual, not just religious. And I come from a line of uh, 
my, the Mexican side of my family, my mom, my grandmother, great grandmother, they were all very, very psychic, like scary psychic. Like, you know, when I was a teenager, I couldn't, I couldn't lie to my mom and say that I was going here when actually I was going a different place because she could see it. She could see. And we'd come home and she'd say, no, I know where you were. And I know who, who you were with. And I know you changed your clothes to something different. Like she saw it and it was horrible, horrible. And I wish I'd known now what, you know, I wish I'd done then what I know now where you can protect your energy. So people, <laughs> people can't spy on you. Um, but that's how I was raised. So super psychic household, but also super Mormon. So there was almost like a ceiling where you could only go so far with intuition, because if you bu- bumped up against the church principles and the church rules, then, then whatever intuition you were getting, that one was from Satan. So, so it was, it was difficult, um, to kind of balance those two things. So then at 30 years old, I ended up, uh, divorcing my first husband, very, very Mormon from a long lineage of pioneer Mormon ancestors. And we got divorced. I, I left my hometown, which I'd never lived away from there. And I left the church. And so it was all within a year. I lost everything that was my identity, my self-identity. And I had to start from scratch. And I started to, you know, learn to meditate and do those very basic uh, energetic hygiene things that I should have been doing throughout my life. And, and through meditation, I started to realize that I had gifts of my own, that it wasn't just my, my mom who had that, that I had that too. But I would not have known if I hadn't taken the time to like meditate and get to know my brain and my thought process and all that kind of thing. So then after I realized that I, I was able to see things as well, slowly after many years, I got brave enough to start doing it as a job. And um, yeah, and so through the course of time, I had six kids. Also, I had four with my first husband, the Mormon husband, because Mormons have lots of kids. And then I remarried and had two more babies. And, and the children are all really, really gifted also. And um, we we play a lot of psychic games at home where we have a lot of different games. I'll, I'll play with the kids to hone their intuition and things. And um, so what do I do? What I do for work is I do clairvoyant readings for people, which I love doing. And during those readings, I'll also kind of look at their energy field and kind of see if they need a rebalancing or if something needs to be pulled out and replaced with something else. And so I'll do energy work also. And I've been teaching uh, classes on the Marys lately, which has just been everything. It has been so much fun. Like it's all I think about (laughs) lately. All I do is research the Marys and watch YouTube videos and I've just been obsessed in the last year or so. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> wow. Wow. Have you been able to stay in touch with, with the, the kid's dad? Oh yeah. We're really good friends. He lives maybe 10 minutes from me and we go to the kids parent teacher, teacher conferences together. We go to their soccer games together. We're, you know, and I'm good friends with his wife. He married a really nice Mormon woman who they're perfect. You know, they can both do the Mormon thing. And, and I found somebody who didn't even know the story of Moses. <laughs> so someone who has no religious background to speak of, which was weird, but refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. I was sort of wondering if you like got cast out or something, because you sort of mm-hmm. left. Initially it was, uh, it was sad because yeah. you know, that was my whole friend group. Everybody that I counted on that was in my life that I loved and was very close to, those were the Mormon people that I'd grown up with since I was young. And when I left the church, you know, the, the clergy kind of told all the women, don't talk to Coral because she's going to confuse you, which could have been the case. I mean, I might have confused them because they're very, you know, set in their beliefs. And I was going off on something totally different. And when you're doing that, you just can't help but talk about it, <laughs> you know? And I think I might have have confused people who were really comfortable in the church. And so maybe it was better that that happened, but I lost pretty much all of my friends that, that had been Mormon with me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I spoke to somebody else recently on, on one of these interviews and mm. they, and they'd gone through the same thing with yeah. the Mormon church. Yeah. It's, it's hard, but you know, religion in general, I, I think there's a place for it. And I think that there's a, there's certain people who, if they didn't have the rules, they would really have no direction. And there's, I know a couple of people, I don't think it's very many, but for me, I kind of am like, well, if that's the way that you feel most comfortable, okay, <laughs> you know, go for it. Yeah. I try not to 
have a blanket statement that all religion is is bad and is harmful. Mm. So kind of try to have an open mind about it. But my some of my older children are still Mormon. My my son, my oldest son, got back from a Mormon mission just a, a couple of years ago, and he's still you know real strong in the church. Yeah, I mean, I totally grew up without any religion, which is wow. which is completely normal. In, really? in the UK and in what? Denmark as well. It's kind of there. It's kind of there in the background. Mm-hmm. It's still part of the fabric, but no one goes to church. Oh, that's nice. So, so I was christened in the Church of England, which is a Protestant church. Okay. And they're very rational about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's. I mean, it's. It is a different. It is a different feel to it now than when I was young, because at least they've let women in now Uh you know Mm -hmm. and 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 that brings you know a real different energy for me into into the church but it was very rationalistic and I could never find anything for me in it you know Mm -hmm. and I did try because I think I was looking for something but but neither of my parents went to church they didn't have any beliefs my mother came from a Catholic family Irish and mm-hmm. she'd lost her faith when her first husband died when she was pregnant oh. with my sister. So she kind of gave up on God at that point and told him to F off, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um yeah, and here like in Denmark, it's like I think less than one percent or two percent of the population go to church, but the majority of children get have a confirmation when they're like teenager. But it's a lot about it's a lot about having a party, and it's sort of more of a coming of age ceremony. Mm-hmm. Okay, really. But oh, but so strangely enough, that people pay taxes to the church in Denmark. Ah, yeah, they don't even go. They don't go. No, but Pretty it means they get a free funeral when they die. Wow. <laughs> they don't <have> to pay. <laughs> Holy yeah. cow! Yeah, but yeah, I'm one of those people that grew up without any any religion but I did it I did it at school because it was like an optional subject to school for like to okay. study to get your exams and really? I did it because it was easy mm-hmm. it was like fun. I would have loved that I I've always wished that I could go back to college I got my degree in psychology and I wish I'd gone for um, theology I think it'd been so fun to just research all the different religions and because I feel like they all have something there that that is helpful you know yeah 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 I would have liked to have done that but I did it was just the bible and Christianity because I went to a very traditional all-girls school Uh, and I yeah and I I saw this syllabus like alternative syllabuses later and I could have like if I'd have been at a different school I could have studied like all the religions of the world and would have been much more interesting but I mean, you know, I got a B for it I it gave (laughs) me it gave me an O level (laughs) so Yeah. yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I mean, I ca- I came to that much, much later in life in my in my twenties when my mum died. She died mm. when I was twenty six. Oh gosh. Yeah, and it, and and that was what like exploded me into spirituality because right. because it it was really an initiation for me because I I could feel her. I was really really closely connected to my mum. And she, I knew she was dead, but she was still there. And it was like, up until that point, I had completely denied that there was anything wow. such as clairvoyance or, uh, you know, any, any of that stuff. And I was very, very rationalistic about it. It was, it was how I'd been brought up and I couldn't deny it any longer. And it was my mum. So I couldn't like pretend because I loved mm-hmm. her. So of course, like I could feel her there. And I wanted to, you know, not deny that. So, um, right. yeah. It must have been a shock to the people in your life. All of a sudden you're like into all the spiritual things and it must have been a big transition. Well, yeah, I think I, you know, like you, I think I went through a whole change where over a period of time I like changed all the people in my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, things didn't didn't stay the same and, Mm-hmm. And also it took me, it took me some years, you know, if like we take where I was when I was 20 something and where I am now, people yeah. would not recognize me. Mm, <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's, I've really come in that time. I've really come a long way. 
away from you know where I started and I I, I'm like and I I I kind of remember that when I'm looking at young kids sometimes and I'm like oh my god oh my god look they just want to spend loads of money and they're consuming and doing all these things you know I'm sort of and I think what was I doing when I was 15 oh yeah Yeah. (laughs) nothing amazing (laughs) Oh, I don't worry. I don't worry. I don't worry so much. But I'm really interested about the Marys. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I know that's kind of your area of expertise in a way because it's so connected to your work. But yeah, when COVID first hit, I, as everybody was, I was just so ungrounded, so freaked out, didn't know what to believe. And I feel like the Marys concentrating on them and focusing on them was really the, um, the stable piece of my life at that time. The only thing that was still and stable. And it was during that time when COVID first hit that I was speaking with one of my mentors, Rebecca Campbell. I don't know if you know who she is. She's a Hay House author. And she wrote uh, Rise, Sister Rise, if anybody's read that. But she had suggested, because I was going through so much, she suggested that I get a rosary and start praying with it. And I was like, that is a weird suggestion because she's not Catholic, I'm not Catholic. My mother who was from Mexico was raised Catholic. And so in my peripheral vision kind of, I had seen a few things that were in alignment with the Catholic church growing up, not much, but enough to have me be a little bit curious. So when Rebecca mentioned to to start praying the rosary, I I bought one immediately and I started to use it and actually memorize the the traditional prayers and also learned how to use it with prayers that I had created myself. And it was through praying with the rosary in different ways to different goddesses, not just Mary. I started to develop a really strong relationship, not just to the Marys, who I consider, when I say the Marys, I mean Mary Magdalene. Mother Mary, and for me, the Black Madonna. Those are the three Marys that I really focus on the most. And I started to develop a really strong relationship with uh, the the female aspect of divinity, which I had never, I'd never done that until just, you know, I had done a lot of priestess trainings and, and goddess studies, but it hadn't really integrated. And so when something bad happened in my life, if one of my kids were sick or something, I would never pray to a female aspect of God. I just was like, no, because kind of in my back of my mind, I felt like maybe it's not real. Or if it is, and I I pray to her, I might get in trouble. I felt like I would get in trouble, that God would get mad at me. It was very, very weird. But praying the rosary dispelled that. And then it it really brought that energy of of the divine mother into my life and specifically through the the focus on the Marys. Yeah. Mm. I love, I love, I love those energies. And that's how I came to, you know, work with Sarah. She, she came to me as an energy Mm -hmm. when I was channeling. She wasn't someone I believed in or was interested in, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I recognized her. I recognized the energy because I'd been working with Mary Magdalene Mm -hmm. and I, I knew Yeshua. I wasn't, I'm sort of softening now towards divine masculine stuff. Yeah. And of course I have to because Sarah holds the, you know, unity consciousness of the two. Right. But that has been a long path for me to work with the divine masculine. I'm really in my soul, a divine feminine girl. And that black Madonna energy, it's so a part of me. It's just... Oh, yeah? Wow. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just like totally part of my soul and um yeah I really love that really love that energy so much Mm -hmm. but um yeah I would never have picked someone who was like within the Christian (laughs) mythology shall we say you know because Mm -hmm. like where do we place Sarah because people often assume I'm a Christian and I'm like no (laughs) 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 I'm not anything you know, I'm all of it and none of it. Oh, me too. People so, will come over. I paint and I paint a lot of Jesus, Mary, blah, blah. So my whole house looks like a, a Catholic church. And, and they'll be like, are you Christian? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm covered in tattoos of Mary and Christ and still, no, I'm not Christian. So it's funny. But yeah, I felt that way about Mary Magdalene because 
people, it was so trendy to be into Mary Magdalene. So trendy. And, and people, everyone has a priestess program for Mary Magdalene. And, oh, I channel Mary Magdalene. And I was Mary Magdalene in a past life. You know, all these things. So many people have these claims. And so I saw this wave of Mary Magdalene. I was like, no, no Mary Magdalene. No, I'm not jumping on that bandwagon. And I stayed away from that subject for so long. And it was just around COVID where these the energy, the Marys were just knocking at my door. And I was like, if I don't let this energy in, then I'm really at, at a loss. Something is trying to be birthed through this energy and I'm not letting it. And so finally I had to just drop my pride and be like, you know what? Fine. <laughs> What's up with Mary Magdalene? Let's talk about her. Let me start connecting with her and researching her. And it's been an amazing, amazing journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and her energy is just beautiful. But mm. um, I, I, I started with the goddess energies mm -hmm. when I guess, I guess the year before I got pregnant with Joshua. So that must be like 20 years ago now. Was there a certain energy that you started with? That you well, really I can't I, I can't remember exactly what it was that triggered it. There was a crystal shop that I used to go to mm -hmm. in a town near where we lived. Yeah. And there was like a church. It was a non-denominational church where people used to channel and bring through the ascended masters and mm -hmm. and I started going there. And I could feel all the energies when people started channeling. And I was like, I could feel all this stuff around like my third eye. And I was like, oh, I can feel, I can feel things. Oh my God, this something yeah. is really happening here. And there was a particular woman, she ran a two-year priestess course. Mm -hmm. And I picked up this leaflet from the crystal shop and it just kept like talking to you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hello hello like, oh that's not me I'm not that sort of person <laughs> you know and it, and but I just felt it just pulled and pulled and pulled me and so I think I I think I found I think I found her up yeah I found her up and said can I come and talk to you I want to meet you I wanted to make sure that you know I liked her and yeah. and she was great she was great we clicked we really clicked and I really liked her energy and oh it was it was just fabulous I just so you did the program? You I did, did the, the program. Yeah, I loved cool. it. It was like a weekend a month for however many months of the year. And then I did another year when I was pregnant with Josh. Oh, wow. So like I did like the initiation because we like self-initiated ourselves. Mm. And I was nine months pregnant with him. That's so special. I love that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I did um, a, a two-year priestess program also. Okay. Um, I didn't, I feel like I... I didn't learn as much as I would have liked for two years because it was a very long, rigorous program, but it got me in the habit of working with the moon cycles and with the wheel of the year and learning about the Sabbaths and the equinoxes and all that kind of thing. So it was good for that so that I, I really started to work with the cycles of the earth. But I feel like I didn't learn a ton about actual priestessing. And so mm. I've come to learn that on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a long time ago now I did it I remember mm -hmm. I experienced a lot on it it yeah. was that that direct experience of like the goddess and it, for me it was just like coming home it was like oh, this is what I've been missing all my right. life it was it was her because like you know my life growing up I was born in 1970 it just seemed to be that men did everything yeah. you know they wrote all the books, they did all the films. I don't know, of course, it wasn't literally true, but it felt it. And like compared to now, it was it was true. Right. It was a very masculine world that I that I grew up in. Oh, and yeah. um, but but even now, like if I'm sitting in a church, quite often I have to like wrap Sarah around me mm. because it's such a masculine, you know, it's still really missing that that divine yeah. feminine energy is so missing. Yeah, very true. In the church. But I would have I would have chosen, you know, sort of more exotic Eastern ascended masters and stuff. I wouldn't have chosen Sarah, but right. obviously my soul had a different had a different plan. And 
Oh, interesting. I didn't know any of that about you. So that, that gives me a whole different perspective on your work. And yeah. it's, it almost makes it a little, for me, more legitimate because yeah. you not want to connect with something when you're like, that's not me. And it just keeps, you know, pounding at the door. Yeah. That to me feels so authentic. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I have to say my whole spiritual journey has been like that. <laughs> of like having that poor me going oh no oh no and getting really grumpy it. and having temper tantrums and I was saying mm-hmm. I've had a lot of patience with me because I have really sworn a lot and you know but then to have your whole life like overhauled right. and smashed up at certain points and things like that yeah. it's not you know it's not, it's not an easy path but I'm definitely not in this for the lifestyle you know oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's just this is who I am you know, at right. the end of the day, this is who, this is who I am. But like, even like, even like now, because like, if I don't eat a certain diet, I get horrible health problems, psoriasis and all this. Mm. I have to eat, like, I can't eat sugar. I have mm. to eat a lot of vegetables and fruit. And, you know, all these things like that. Like other people are going, oh yes, I'm going to eat this because it's so good for me. And it's like, I have to be dragged to that right. like through my <laughs> through my health problems it's like I don't want to I don't want to be one of those people I want to I want to eat whatever I want to eat and, you know I'm like I'm a really difficult person <laughs> yeah right, be- right before we got on this conversation I was doing a little morning prayer and and I was asking like I was saying I don't need to learn my lessons the hard way anymore I swear I'll get it if you just tell me what to do I'll do it I don't have to learn the hard way guys <laughs> you know we're really trying to implore the divinity to be like, come on, I don't need to learn through through trauma <laughs> anymore. So, but sometimes I know I'm I'm pretty feisty. I don't know if you're into numerology. I'm a five, which is just very. Um, Me too. I, I felt that. That's why I mentioned it. I was like, I bet she's a five. <laughs> and you know, we're so we don't want rules. We don't want anyone telling us what to do. So sometimes we have to learn the hard way. Unfortunately. <laughs> yep. And it's just, it's just how it is. And, you know, and that's how I am. And I, I have, I think, yeah, I think, I think I even kind of like that about mm-hmm. myself. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I can say that. Yeah. I like, I like, I like not following the rules. It's like, it's oh, a little yeah. bit hard for me in Denmark because there's a lot of rules that you're supposed to follow. And I'm like, oh, very conservative. I'm not, it's I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> My own thing. Exactly. So how did you how did you come to Sarah? How did she come to you? Where did um, that start? You know, I have been as I've been teaching these classes on on Mary Magdalene and and the Black Madonna and Mother Mary. And I just started reading a ton of books on Mary Magdalene and the different theories. And I think it was Gardner. What's his name? Lawrence Gardner. I think I was reading one of his books and his books are just very dense. What's, what's, what's difficult is that most books about Mary Magdalene, Black Madonna, any of these subjects, they're very dry and it's almost like textbooks and they're not that fun to read. And so I really slog through these. And so I'd like, I, your book is, is so light and easy to digest. And it's, it has a, a energy of feeling instead of just being facts and, and I really liked that about that book. So when I started really researching the story of Mary Magdalene and Christ and were they married and did they have children and blah, 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 that's when I started learning about, about Sarah. And there was a number of different theories about Sarah, about who Sarah was. Sarah Tamar, was she, one theory, which I'd never heard, was that Christ had a sister named Sarah. And they say that she could have come to France with Mary Magdalene and they called her black Sarah because she had like a black uh, robe that was kind of indicative of her status at the time. So that was one of the theories. I've only read that in one book though. So who knows? And then there was Sarah Lacali, which I was like, Oh, are these the same Sarah Tamar, Sarah Lacali? Is that the same person? And then there was also the theory of there's a, a black Sarah that was a little girl that was like the handmaiden of Mary Magdalene, who was really dark, and and maybe she was her servant. And so it's all these theories about who Sarah could have been, but but nobody says she didn't exist. <laughs> you know, nobody says that. We're just trying to figure out which one makes sense. And so that was so I was like, I need. Is there anything written, anything about just Sarah, not Mary Magdalene, not Christ, just her? 
And your book was the only one. You were the only person that has that focuses on that story. So that's why I was like, well, <laughs> I'm starting there. Maybe I'm ending because nobody else has much information yeah 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 no I appreciate what you're saying she's always mixed in amongst other 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 things I'm actually sort of trying to keep my diary clear now for the next few months because I'm going to write the second book which is it's going to be different it's going to be the channelings that I've done which Mm -hmm. tell sort of more of a story about Sarah but not so much like who she was, but what she's about. Right. <laughs> because I'm a really pragmatic person. Mm-hmm. And to me, the most important thing is not who Sarah was, but like what, what she come here to do. Like, what's the point? And because, you know, oh, yeah. like looking around at the world, we really need, you know, help. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe that's not the best way to put it, but that's sort of what's coming out of my mouth at the moment. And she has so much, she has so much to offer us and so much wisdom, but so much like practical esoteric help. If I can use practical and esoteric together, these energies that she brings through, they really make stuff happen. Shit happens. I mean, it's like, it's phenomenal. And when you when you connect with her, do you see her as a person, or do you just see a, a, a like an energy, or how do you kind of communicate with her? Can so, when I first sort of realised that she was there, because she came through when I was I was doing um, I did like a six week course working with Hawaiian energies. I'd been to the Big yeah. Island. Mm -hmm. And at the end of every one, I would open up and channel a Hawaiian goddess. And then on the last one, Sarah came through. How weird. Yeah. And it was at a place called Pu'u Honua O Honau Now, which is like a place of sanctuary on the big island, a refuge Mm -hmm. where people used to be able to go. Like, you know, if they'd like broken one of the kapu, one of the taboo rules. Mm -hmm. the punishment was death they could go to these sacred places it was very very strict their their laws they could go to one of these places and they would be protected and they would sort of be there for a while like there would be priests there and healing they would get healing and there's one on the on the big island that I went to and the energy there oh my god there's just like this vortex of like love energy it's so divine feminine you know I loved that. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to. to no, no, go on. You. But yeah, I really love because, you know, your, fo- you fo- your work focuses on Sarah, but it also focuses on the islands. And that's me because I visited Hawaii probably more times than anywhere else besides where I've lived and the other uh, Pacific islands. Also, my son went on a mission to Tonga. And so I ended up visiting there. I have uh, really close friends and family in Hawaii and I've taught classes on Ho'oponopono and not just the thank you, I love you, blah, 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 but the way that it was taught in ancient Hawaii before they came up with the little prayer. And so the Pacific Islands are just so (laughs) near and dear to me. So it was funny as I watched your work, I'm like, that is weird. We have like very similar connection interests. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the energies in that part of the world are just so special. And I really hope I get to go back one day. I don't know. Traveling is something even without <laughs> COVID that's that's quite difficult in my family life now. Right. But um, yeah. And but, you know, who, who knows? But I have a connection with those energies anyway. And I still they turn up a lot in right. meditations and in workshops and classes I'm doing with Sarah Pele comes along wow, and she like so she just like lava steam cleans everybody's to get us to the right point where we can then connect because Sarah's energies are still a little bit away from where humanity is at the moment so there's sort of a gap you have to get over and Pele and um you know these other Hawaiian energies they really really help us get there and I totally feel like the new earth is just being like breathed out of Kilauea it's just coming Mm -hmm. out like with all of those um, fumes that are coming out. Oh, I just love it. I Were just... you able to go to Mount Haleakala? The, it's like this big crater and it's supposed to be the heart chakra. 
think it's the heart chakra of the planet. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Oh, I totally yeah. felt just so much love. Yeah. Uh, it's like I could I wanted to set up a tent and just live there. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was just so pure. It was beautiful. You know, it's interesting. You were mentioning how kapu, the word kapu. Yeah. Is that if you break these, you know, sacred kapu, yeah. then you'll be killed. Uh, so I'm writing a book. I'm almost done with it. But I talk a lot about the islands in that book. And and I researched the word. I was talking about taboo and yeah. how, things, you know, my tattoos are taboo or wearing short skirts in the Mormon church are taboo. And it actually came, the word taboo came from the word kapu. So it originally meant something very sacred. Yeah. And I thought that was so neat. Such a big turnaround when you see where these words come from, these things that mean bad, that mean like bad and embarrassing and shameful that it originally had meant sacred and holy and set apart for something else, which mm-hmm. I just love that. About the Hawaii, Hawaiian language and most of the Pacific Islander languages, they all have this, every word is like a little poem and a little yeah. message in itself, which is so cool. It's really, really a sacred language. And when I got back from Hawaii, because this was 2005, I started working with sacred chants, Hawaiian sacred chants. Right. And um, I use actually one on this podcast at the beginning, at the end, there's the sacred chant of me singing a Hawaiian Oh, really? Chant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they believe that the Pleiadians, I'm sure you probably know this, the, the Pleiadians seeded Hawaii and that it was them that kind of created that Hawaiian language and that they created, created it vibrationally so that it wasn't just to communicate, but that every word was a vibration and a transmission, which I think is so cool. Yeah. Oh, I just like, just as, as we're talking about it, the energy, just like, oh, I found yeah. another soul sister. <laughs> so many connections. It's so funny. And from so far apart. So yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> really refreshing. I really hope, I was hoping to go this year, but I'm so sad. You know, I don't know when, when we'll be allowed back in. So hopefully maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the world will start opening up. I hope so. Sometime this year. It's hard to imagine now because we've been in lockdown for a year. So it's hard to really, we've sort of got used to it. And it's like, can it ever really change? It's like. (laughs) Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. I can't remember where we were now. We sort of got on a whole little thing. I know. We started talking about Hawaii. Well, I was asking about Sarah and how how you see her energy when you actually communicate with her. Do you see her like as a person? Oh, yeah, yeah. So so that was it. So so she came through and I channeled her. And then I went home and I closed my eyes and I just saw green. And I was like, oh, because I always see pink when it's Mary Magdalene. And if it's Yeshua, I see yellow. Right. And there was this green. I'm like, oh, I went to sleep. And then I, it just kept, it was just there all the time. And I was like, oh, God, this is, you know, getting a bit weird now. Right. So so that is that whole thing with the green energy. Mm-hmm. I am not that sort of visual in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get visions sometimes I get flashes and I can see things around people, but I'm very, very clairsentient Mm, and I work a lot with colors. So I don't see her, see her, but the image that's sort of in my mind is when I went out to um, the Pyrenees, I went Mm. there because I went there as a child. My dad took, we went on holiday there. He'd got interested in it. And then I went back like years later as a priestess of Sophia with a group of Mm -hmm. priestesses of Sophia. And Sarah was just so present in the rocks and in the land of that place. It was just. Okay. Yeah. The Pyrenees for sure. Yeah. And, and this is sort of around like Renla Chateau and I had this really clear image of her in my mind and she was actually quite an athletic build. Oh, wow. Like quite, you know, like a broad shouldered sort of like she could have been an athlete, you know, mm-hmm. and fairly tall as well. And that and that and that really surprised me. I sort of, mm-hmm. you know, was sort of I would have like imagined her as sort of small and. Yeah. Delicately like could... boned. But no, she was like 
springing about leaping around off those rocks like you know this is sort of how 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 it came to me but I mean all the different myths and legends there are of Sarah I find they give a different aspect of her energy yeah so I kind of like I like all of them because they Mm -hmm. all tell us something different about her and she's not really a person I feel that you can pin down she's like you know like that she has that same sort of freedom of spirit she's going to be how she is and you know she's not going to be like put into a box at all Uh, I'd love to see someone paint her black at the moment I've just got this urge to see her as a as a as a colored woman yeah yeah that would be really neat I would really like to paint a a black Madonna yeah but you know I have never painted black skin I've painted very dark like Mexican skin but not black just because I I count on commissions and I just haven't had anyone you know ask me to and I keep meaning to but just on my own to to practice I'm sure I could do it it can't be that hard but eventually I'll, I'll probably um, paint something like that because I do believe that they had really dark, you know, they had really dark skin and, and doing this, this research on the black Madonna really kind of solidifies that it, that they were dark skinned people. And I think it's neat, Sarah, where you're saying she's very, she can't be pinned down. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same uh, as the black Madonna where no matter how much you read about her, how many stories you read, how many theories, you're never going to understand. You're ne- it's never going to lead anywhere where, okay, here's the actual truth. You're eventually going to have to turn inward and go, this is what it feels true to me. This is what feels true to me. And it's, I maybe Sarah wanted it that way so that she didn't have, oh, this was when she was born. And then she did this. And then she looked like this. And so she could leave it open so that people can take what feels right to them. Mm. And universal energy you can translate in your own way yeah because I mean people have asked me you know what my beliefs are about it all and I say I don't have any (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that's my belief I don't know you know but I'm just not a person to have beliefs anyway I like to stay open to the energy and not I don't want to turn it into another religion you know right I don't yeah. want it to be like, it was like this and it was like this. And, you know, right. I've had a few experiences where I've seen things a certain way, but I just think everyone's contribution really adds something to the whole story in a way that is just, is just beautiful. And I also won't channel anything about it because it feels oh. too ego driven. Wow. To like it's I'm like, going to have the answer and then I'll tell everybody the real answer like that kind of and also like how is my poor little ego going to cope with that you know I'm just a person I'm just a human being and of course I do I do sort of because I'm a very trancey person as well I'm sort of in a state of of, a trance when I channel but I'm still Mm -hmm. there right and how do I know it's not just me like making things up so I grounded very grounded because a lot of they don't they don't do that they kind of just assume anything through is gospel truth because it was channeled and that's, that can go wrong. That can go very wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, if it comes to me unbidden, then yeah. that's okay. You know, then I take it as I was supposed to get that information, but to sit down right. and ask for it, I struggle. But the other thing is I work with Sarah, you know, at the end, at the bottom of everything that I do, I'm an energy mm-hmm. healer, uh-huh. whether it's working with people's light bodies or working with the earth and Sarah's, sort of human story I don't think I'm the person to tell that other people Mm. can take on that job I'm here to represent what she can do energetically and that's what I've done I've just been spending the last year teaching people like a healing system of working with Sarah and her angels Mm. and initiating them into that and it's phenomenal it's just amazing the work that people are doing and to me that's that's important not did she have a sister did she you know someone someone else can can deal with all of that this is this is my passion and my focus and what's important to me and people do get a bit frustrated with me but this is who I am you know I can't be somebody else I'm not a historian Uh uh-huh yeah 
Well, the work you're doing, I think, is, you know, is what is needed right now. I know from reading your, your book, I have a little daughter who I told you um, online that she's, her name is Violet and she's just the sweetest little girl, but she has a lot of emotional, I don't know if it's emotional problems or what, but she has a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of crying, a lot of anger. And I started to use the little, the violet flame on little Violet, Sarah's, which I had used St. Germain's for so long, but it was, it matches her, you know, it matches my daughter because she's little. And so to have an energy of somebody who, most people see as a child and it's a, a gentle, healing, loving, sweet energy. St. Germain has this very powerful, you know, masculine, but it's very healing and clearing. But Sarah's is this gentle, something very palpable for children that you can use with children and, 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 you know, women who are going through hard times, like gentle, 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 not nothing harsh, nothing, you know, too overbearing. So I'm grateful, you know, even if you're not doing the, the historian stuff, which I don't think is super necessary, you're, you're doing the stuff that matters. So, oh, Thank you. And, I, and I, I really love to hear that that's been so beautiful for you to work with, with your daughter. It's like, yeah. yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah, she needed, she really needed that. And um, it's funny because I don't use that, that her violet flame, Sarah's violet flame, I don't use it on my other children it feels like it's for my daughter. And so it's, it's almost like this very unique connection. I feel like she will have with people where she'll kind of like, Hey, I want to work with you. And, and so it's, it's just very specific to, to her. It's, it's interesting. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's it. And I think Sarah's energy is for certain people. Yeah. You know? exactly. I don't think it's for everybody. Right. And that's not about people being special or anything. It's just about, where you are and what kind of energy you're holding right. and certain things fit different people don't they like different sports suit different people mm-hmm. and 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 things like that you know yeah. so I always I always tell people you know when I train them and stuff it's like always use your intuition only bring Sarah intuition into things if your guidance tells you to Mm, because true. because actually her energy is for not is really really powerful mm-hmm. and she can kind of blast people out of the water if they weren't ready to kind oh. of go to that next level because she is kind of the new earth energies right. you know yeah yeah but so you were writing a book too. Tell me about that. Oh gosh, yes, I've been for a long time. <laughs> I think that the first book you write, the only way to learn how to write a book is to write a book. That's what I'm starting to realize. Like, and so I did my own crash crash course of how to write a book by doing horrible the first draft, and the second was a little better, and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I will be done with it by the end of the year. That will happen. <laughs> I've been working on it for a few years, but it's about, it's actually about my son going on the the mission to Tonga, the Mormon mission, and me being very triggered by it because I wasn't Mormon anymore. And it was my journey through those two years of of supporting my son in something that was kind of hurtful to me. Hmm. And it was such a huge transition for me because it was the first time in my life where I truly started to be myself and, and just be authentic to myself because you know, when I was Mormon, I wasn't really being who I, I was. And when I left the church, I had all this guilt about it. And so I would, I would adjust myself to kind of still be a little bit Mormon. When I was around my family, I wouldn't wear tank tops. I, I would wear longer skirts and things and, and I wouldn't get tattoos, certain things that, that I still wanted to uh, not offend anybody that was, that was connected to the church, including my family, my parents. And when my son left on a mission, it was really the first time I was like, you know what? I've done enough. I've done enough for this religion. I've done enough for my family for all my life. And now it's time to just be who I am. And it was through that journey of, of honing my authenticity that I realized I had really psychic gifts. I had a lot of psychic gifts that I didn't know because I was suppressing myself so much. So it's really beyond the story. It's a, it's a book about the connection between authenticity and psychic development and how those two are so connected. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's why it's so important for people to um, work on it and build it up. It doesn't make right. for an easy life, but it makes for an authentic life. Yeah. 
yeah absolutely it's what has been my saving grace really right yeah and I would like to once this book is done I'm so ready to start writing a book about the Marys next because I have so much to say about that and and that's really where my heart is right now so it's hard to keep writing this book that I'm kind of like oh I'm over it <laughs> uh, you know I, it, I I gotta finish it I've, I put so much time into it it'll be good but I am ready to start something new yeah and that's it there's a there's a spiritual lesson in working through those last difficult bits isn't there and oh, actually yeah. like finishing something because yes. I am so good at starting projects oh my yeah. god because I'm I'm really entrepreneurial so I'm just uh-huh. like I'm just forever having new ideas and it's like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and yeah. then you know and then I have to get real and go perhaps I need to finish the first five that I've started you know? how long did it take you to get through your book from when you started it to have it published Wow. I can't, you know, I can't remember now because it's, I don't know how many years ago it was, but I, I mean, I have to say, I like books that take some years to write because there's oh, more yeah. essence mm, in them. Okay. I, th- I think, you know, I mean, I know sometimes someone writes an inspirational book and it comes through fast and it's really fabulous, but right. these ones that take, there's just more, more soul right. in them. I find, I mean, I know it was, you know, the stuff that's in that book, because it's not, it's not that huge, Sarah's little book of healing, but there was a lot of years of stuff prior to that, maybe 10 years or something, nine years of like Mm -hmm. the stuff that I'm writing about, because I have a thing where I can write about things in a very simple way that Mm -hmm. are actually really, really complex. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I used to have this problem when I was having to write like um essays and stuff for my nursing diploma Mm. because like you had to write I don't know three and a half thousand words and the thing is I could get it all said in two thousand you know because I just don't use any extra right unnessary stuff I get it I get it I get it all said but yeah I I can't remember it wasn't quick though I didn't like sit down and write it in a month it was a fairly that's good to know (laughs) yeah fairly slow process and this this book I'm going to start writing it's going to have channelings in there from the last 15 years <laughs> so, wow yeah. you just keep them you channel them you type them out and keep them that is smart yeah. to get better at that yeah because because for me they're not just words each channeling that comes through holds an energy matrix and it changes me right you know so I then have to work with that process so I'm not like throwing them out like every day you know it's yeah it's a thing it's a teaching it gets saved it's like a precious thing and then it gets worked with over and over again yeah 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 Yeah, that's interesting because I know a lot with channelings I've heard people say well if it's channeled why would it need to be edited (laughs) and I'm like Yeah, but, you know, when it's coming through, it's more, it's not a word for word process all the time. Sometimes it's just the feeling or the idea, and then you have to translate it. And if you're in that weird trance-like meditative state, you're not going to remember all the rules of writing and how to make it sound just so, so yeah, (laughs) even if it's channeled, it still needs to be tidied and, and made to be a little more palpable. Yeah. yeah. And and quite often there's images that came up in my mind while I was channeling that I want to explain afterwards as well, right. like as me. Right. Because it didn't come out in the words, but it was really, I could see it in, in my mind and it gives like another reflection right. to, to the teachings. But, um, you know, can I ask you a question? Oh. You, I don't know how much you actually know about Sarah or if it's just kind of the energies that come through, but something that I've wondered for a while, I read a while ago that the Florida lease is that how you say it, Florida Lise? That yeah. it represents Mary Magdalene and her three children. Have you heard that? No. I mean, I don't, to be honest, I don't have a lot of time to read all these books. I, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I do buy them sometimes. In fact, mm-hmm. I'm really trying to read that, the Megan Watterson one oh, at the moment, because so she has yeah. such a beautiful energy. But if I actually oh, I get it. to the end, it would be a miracle. <laughs> oh, really? I just, okay. you know, I just, I don't manage to stick with books. Mm-hmm. very very like well that. but um 
I mean, what I love about the, the fleur de lis is that is that triple aspect. Mm-hmm. And it has that, for me, it has the same energy as the triketra, which is, <laughs> you know, it's like, it sort of goes like that. It's it's Nordic and Celtic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like a little leaves almost, right? Yeah. But- and you you can make it by drawing the circles. It's the circles all like coming together that make right. that, that right. make that. Um, shape and to me they have a they have a same they have the same energy they're just from different cultures basically you know that's that's my (laughs) that's my feeling of it but um, I had never thought of it that way okay so what was it it represents Mary Madeline and her three children her three children because it's the three little kind of prongs that come out of it and and one of the theories is that it it was such a big deal in France and it was, you know, the symbol for France and all this kind of thing because it represented Mary Magdalene and her her children. But there's so many other theories of what it what it meant. If you look it up like on Google, it'll say it was an orchid. And another theory, it was it was a bee originally that was kind of morphed into what it is now, which I love that theory too. But uh yeah, so I love yeah. geeking over yeah. You know, and sacred symbols and all that is so much fun. But I, I I know a few people that have written to me about the fleur de lis and say, do you connect to this with Sarah? Because I really connect to it with Sarah. I have known people that, you know, so it seems to be a thing uh, for yeah, people yeah. around Sarah. But for mm-hmm. me, it's the triketra because I connect much more to that Nordic side. But because that was the other thing I was going to mention earlier and then I forgot. We have mm-hmm. to remember that Sarah didn't just have one life. I know I have read somebody who feels they're an aspect of Sarah. I um, can't remember oh. her name at the moment. And she feels like that was Sarah's first life. Oh. when she And I and I just personally, personally, I feel a little bit dubious mm. about that. Because to come in in your first human incarnation as Sarah, the daughter of Yeshua and Magdalene, that's big, quite, that's quite big a big, job. yeah, that's quite a big <laughs> ask. You yeah. need to get some experience before you take yeah, on. Yeah, I think... <laughs> Yeah, you know, just but that's sort of my sense is that you know maybe a bit of development before that could be a bit useful. But I do have a strong sense of Sarah as obviously having had other lives. She wasn't just she didn't just have that one life. Neither sure. did Mary Magdalene. Neither did Yeshua. Right. And you know, I see her in different cultures and in different times. And maybe that's what the 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 woman of color thing is about is maybe she's had a because like I've never been to Africa so mm-hmm. I've seen Ethiopia uh, I saw a program about Ethiopia and that was just wild the energy is coming off the landscape I was like oh it was so Ooh. so spiritual oh, but um wow. you know maybe there's aspects of Sarah that are manifesting through Africa and that African lineage I don't I don't know I mean why not because she's repre- right. like all of them they're representing aspects of the divine didn't just yeah. suddenly start 2000 years ago you know this is this, this right. we're going back to the beginning of creation here so I mean that's it there's just so much more to this than we can understand with our little our little tiny minds you know it's like our souls yeah. know so much more Oh, it's so you know, one weird theory I came across recently. I actually read it on Diane Cooper, the angel. She not angel, unicorns. Yeah, unicorns and angels. That she writes books. I I just think her her page is so fun. It's so like happy and just fun. But she suggested that there's a theory that Mary, Mother Mary, and this all ties in with the Black Madonna. That the, the statues of the Black Madonna. The reason why they're black is because some believe that Mary was Isis, was actually a reincarnation of Isis, and that Christ was the reincarnation of Horus. And those statues for Isis and Horus were black, exactly the same, except they've become more European uh, now, but that that was the connection because they were literally the reincarnation. I think that's, I love that theory. I think it's very cool. I mean, who's to say, but... I, I I'll say I like that. <laughs> that is that is really. I mean, that's so interesting. I mean, because there's such obvious energy connections between the Marys and and Isis, and I've right. had dreams about Isis that are like oh. really like proper goddess dreams. There's not just oh, wow. you know something in my mind just going going over, and you can you know so many of us we can just feel it. We just we yeah. know it in our 
bones without knowing mm. necessarily what it what it means it just it just it just feels like a a given fact almost mm-hmm. that that isis so so that totally makes sense doesn't it because for it. what's the other side of isis it's it's horus isn't it so mm. yeah that sort of whole divine masculine thing that i'm not so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, I had to make the the opposite switch where I was very connected to the masculine God, because that's what I was raised with. And then to bring in the divine feminine was very hard for me, because I felt like I was, I don't know, being heretical or almost evil. I think that's probably stemming from past lives of being punished for worshiping the divine feminine. I feel that that's where it came from for me. So it's interesting when other people feel that way about the masculine because I'm like really (laughs) I think I I think I had a lot of resentment like you know built up because it's sort of like that blame thing you made it all go away I really liked it the way it was with all the divine feminine but like it's interesting because like recently I've been like pushed into working with the divine masculine energy and I'm actually teaching a class this weekend on balancing the divine feminine and masculine energies Mm. through Sarah and you know in in very metaphysical ways because like all my work is very esoteric and we're using Mm -hmm. symbols and and Mm -hmm. stuff like that but it's like you've been pushed towards the divine feminine because so we're all being made to balance so the things that we're missing it's like it's like it's sort of a bit like the last bit you've got to get your book out we're being yeah. made to do now all the things that we left till last because we didn't really <laughs> want to have to deal with it. You know, it's like, I know it. and yet we're finding there's all these amazing gifts in them. Mm. It's just beautiful. Tell, you've got So you've got a class coming up with the Marys. Is that I right? Do. I have my last. So I was doing a three part class since the beginning of the year. I did Mary, Mother Mary, and we did how to connect with her through roses. And then we did a class on Mary Magdalene and the rosary. And the last class is introduction to the Bach Madonna. And that's going to be April 11th. And it's my time PST. I'm in Las Vegas and it's 1230 on April 11th. And so it's just donation based, which I, I wanted to do for these intro classes, just whatever people want to shoot me is cool or nothing it is fine too. Just, I just wanted an opportunity to, to teach it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but in time, what I would like to do is to create a course where one is just Mary Magdalene. One is just about mother Mary, where we can actually really dive deep into where they might've gone after the crucifixion and the different legends about the black Madonna. So we don't have just an hour per energy that we really can dive super deep. Mm. So a- Actually, I'm going to do that. But so, yeah, but, how how can people find that class that you're going to be uh, They teaching? can contact me. I my website. I need to kind of rework it, so I wouldn't super suggest you go on my website right now. But through Facebook is a really good way to contact me. Just under Coral Newberry, Instagram also at Coral Newberry. I have two separate accounts. One is just Coral Newberry, and the, the other one is Coral Newberry Art, which has my my art and the candles, altar candles I sell. So any of those, and even email would be okay. Coral Newberry at gmail.com. And just let me know that you want a Zoom link to the class, and it will be recorded, and I will send a recording to everybody who signs up for it if you can't make it live fantastic and I will put those I will put those links to your Instagram and Facebook page on in the show notes anyway so people will be able to to find it but um I mean what a One of the reasons I contacted you was I sort of felt like I want to talk more about Mary Magdalene and these sort of energies and there you were and I could just feel those energies were like coming out of you so (laughs) you know I know it kind of feels like everybody's doing it and all the rest of it but everybody does it in a different way they do you know and the way you're doing it is like completely unique to you and it, it just feels it feels really beautiful the way you're expressing the energy I really love it thank you you seem quite fearless I mean I'm, I'm oh not, gosh, I don't want to so put scared. that yeah I know I know I'm scared right now <laughs> I said I know so I said I don't want to put a label on you and go you're like this but you do you have that quality of like seeming like really like oh, fierce woman you. you know in her power and yeah 
Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I get scared for it. That's something that I just has not gone away for me since I was little. I've been speaking in public and, and doing plays and things like that. And I just never, I never get used to it. I'm always terrified. And even teaching these classes, my stomach is just in knots beforehand. But I, you know, when you have something in your heart that is so needs to be expressed, you have to, even if you're like terrified. And so that's what I've been doing is, is being scared and doing it anyways. But teaching the Mary Magdalene class has been really transformative because her energy is so fearless. She is fearless. She's fearless and strong. And she comes in to kind of help us plug up the holes inside of our energy where we, where we're afraid or we feel like we can't move forward. She, she fortifies us and, and, and gives us an opportunity to have a little bit more power as we, we move forward. So it's been very, very helpful to work, to work with her. Yeah. Just love it. I just love that energy. Before we finish, mm-hmm. are there any spiritual tips that you would like to give to our listeners that's something that you really like doing every day and you know you're a really busy woman so because I always like tips that like are quite quick (laughs) okay I got a good one then let's do a really fast one this is I was going to talk about rosaries but that's not quick you have to go buy one and do prayers and figure out how to use it but this is a fast one and I was just telling my my little daughter yesterday she was confused about making a decision and I was like Violet, this is how mama makes her decisions. And what I do is I will put my hand on my heart and it almost, what I've noticed is when I'm trying to channel, when I'm trying to do a reading for someone or make a decision when I'm very stressed out, very anxious, I'll put my hand on my heart and it almost, it's super weird, but it almost is like a a walkie talkie where you're pressing a button and all of a sudden you can communicate so much better with your guides and your angels, your higher self. And I believe that our hearts actually is like a portal. That's a portal, a world between the two worlds. And if we tap into it, we can gain knowledge and and insight so much faster. And physically touching your heart is bringing attention to your heart. If we touch our foreheads, if we touch our ear, we're going to start thinking about our ear. We touch our heart, we'll immediately drop into our heart. And another short little tip is as you're touching your heart to as you're breathing, kind of imagining that your heart has a little mouth and it's breathing in and out. And it's, I don't know why this works, but it does where you breathe in through your heart and exhale through your heart. And, and that is such a a easy and fast way to, to tap into your intuition. So I use that all the time. (laughs) I love that. I'm doing it now. It feels grounding as well and centering and balancing. Yeah. It's funny when I'm doing readings, if I take my hand off my heart, I will lose all my information <laughs> I just got. It's so weird. I'm so going to use this. I'm going to yeah. be walking around now with my hand glued to my heart. Oh, yeah. If you ever see me like on videos and they where people are interviewing me, almost always I'll have my hand on my heart or when I'm teaching classes. And it just I have to or I'll forget what I'm saying. <laughs> it's super weird but it works. So I I ask everyone to try it. It's going to change your life. I promise. Uh, They're all there. They'll all be there now listening and with their hands (laughs) on their hearts. I know it. I absolutely know it, Coral. Mm -hmm. Any, any last words before, you know, now you've got the chance. Is there anything we didn't get to anything we didn't say? I don't think so. I think we covered quite a bit. I think we did all right. But if anyone has questions for me, if you feel free to reach out and I'll, I'll get back to you. I promise. It's been so good talking to you today. Thank you, Rachel. I was so worried the whole time. I was like, I'm going to call her Sarah. I know it. Because every time I think about you, I'm like, oh, Sarah, I got to talk to Sarah. And <laughs> I'm so glad I, did, I didn't I did do that. <laughs> it happens a lot. But people write it to me. And people write it to me as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, it just makes me laugh because like, I know I'm me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all right. But, but it's actually in my astrology chart that I work in partnership with people Mm. it's how it works for me it's actually sort of carved into my astrology chart that I am to work in partnership representative you're the energetic representative almost it feels so we are we're part me and Sarah we're a team (laughs) yeah I can feel that it's very hard to separate you from her very hard so thank you very much and um maybe we'll have a another conversation another time when you've got a a thing coming out or yeah maybe when my book maybe when I'm done with my book (laughs) I'll let you know (laughs) because it has a lot about the islands and different 
legends of the islands and things like that a lot about psychic development and all that stuff so that sounds lovely and definitely sounds like a book I want to read I have read a lot of books on Hawaii I have to say that I have got quite a big library over there and some really nice old books like I've got one from the 1800s it's like wow yeah yeah I mean not an original copy or anything but that's when it was one of the um I can't remember, was it Emerson something? He was collecting stories and songs and because he knew they were getting lost. Right. So, yeah, so many, so many nuggets of gold. Oh, my gosh, no kidding. We won't start on that. It's another, it's another subject. So save that for next time. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you've enjoyed uh, another show with me and a lovely guest. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Rachel, I'll see you later.